is a response to two questions from my good friend Avner Levy. He, say, he got some questions from um, one guy says a polytheist with a twist, and another guy's an atheist. So here's the polytheist. He says like this: God loves Israel so much, according to what the Torah says, and the God of Israel told Avram that his descendants would be inherited as the land of Canaan. Why then did he let them go to Egypt to be to be slaves? He said, "How would he?" How she said, "His chosen people. Why did he let them go to Egypt?" So I'll ask you another question. Hashem loves humanity so much. Why would he let there be death? Why would there be suffering? Why would there be strife? So the answer is, since the time of Priyat Adas, when Adam Rishon was entrusted to be in the Gan Eden and not touch Priyat Adas, and he succumbed to his wife who succumbed to the, uh, the serpent, there is good and bad mixed in this world. And it's our job to use our intellect to stick only to the good. It says in Parshadeh, V'chate B'chaim, he says, look, before I'm giving you today a blessing and a curse, and choose the blessing, choose, I'm bringing for you life and death, choose life, choose life. So, um, so why does he let him go to Egypt? It's everything, the Baal Shem Tov explained that there's an avoidance of Berurim, that once there was a um, mixing of good and bad, there's, according to Kabbalah, 288 sparks that fell into the world and, and animate physicality. So once the physical world became a place of, um, of holiness, there's holiness infused in it, when a Jew goes and, and, and he, uh, he makes a blessing on, the, uh, on like food, he elevates a certain spark in it back to its source, back to God, and then eats the food, he used the energy to serve God even more. And then he's constantly reusing and recycling holy energy that's in the physical world and sending it back up to the source, back to God. And this is the greatest sanctification of God's name that's possible. So we went to Egypt for two reasons. One to make do with Avodah Spirurim, that in Egypt there are a lot of sparks that had to be elevated, and the Jews were there to elevate the sparks. And the other reason I think this is my own little thing is um, we were, because we were a nation of slaves, right? We were slaves to Paro, okay? So we had this experience. There's nothing worse than being a slave to a physical person. You can ask anyone who's had history of slavery in their background. If you're a slave to a physical person, nothing's worse. And when, you, when you're liberated from slavery, you're eternally grateful. Now, this was a necessary, a necessary precondition for the Jewish people, simply because God wanted to take them out, not to be free men, to be wild men doing whatever they want, eating swine and uh, masturbating, whatever. No. God wanted to take them out so they would be slaves to God. And if God wants you to be a slave to him, he wants a nation of slaves, like the Jewish people are basically a nation of slaves to God, what does he have to do? He has to show them a comparison. Look, you can be a slave to me, and I give you Shabbos, I give you tefillin, I give you blessings from the heavens, from the earth, I give you cattle, and I give you grain, I give you all these blessings, right? But the trade-off is you have to serve me. Now you can compare that to being a, a slave to a person like you were in Mitzrayim, for, uh, to Paro, you were a slave to Paro, which is better, which is worse. And now that we have this um, relative perspective, now when we wake up in the morning, we say, Mo De'ani, thank you God for making me a slave to you and not to a, not, not to a bus of Adam. Like we say, Bracha Shalos Tani Avid. He didn't make me a slave to a bus of Adam, to a king, to a physical king in a physical body who's flawed and who's not so nice and can be mean and can be nice and has different emotions. We're slaves to God who's infinitely good. That's why I let us go down. That's my, my little take. Two, two options. This one is an atheist. One of the ten mitzvahs is you shall not commit murder. Yet as we, the Jews, were allowed to go through Canaan and wiping out the entire peoples, pillaging and murdering left and right, does, does the commandment say you shall not commit murder unless God tells you otherwise? No, it's clear. It's in the message. Then, then what gave the Jews permission to go and kill the Canaanites and take their land? Okay. Uh, the Rebbe brings up this question. I'll give you another thing. It says the Torah was only given for peace. Gemara says the, tone, the Torah was only given in this world for peace. So the Rebbe asks the question, yeah, what about Timchei, Zecher, Zachar, Amalek, Mitach HaShemayim? We know Mashiach comes, going to be this nation called the Malek. We're going to have to wipe out the, the, the father, the son, the, the God, daughters, the entire nation has to be wiped out of Malek. Like uh, Shaul made the mistake, he had Gog and he had a Malik and, and basically he didn't wipe out everything and that's how, uh, by, you know, they get impregnated and then Haman eventually came from this, from this king. And uh, whatever, that perm story, we almost got murdered again. But basically, why, does, why, why is that? So the Rebbe says the peace, the Torah was given for peace, means part of the peace process is wiping out a Malik physically. This is peace in God's world, because a Malik disturbs God's world by not being at peace with the Jewish people. A Malik has sworn to kill the Jewish people for eternity. So because he's sworn to kill them, Hashem made the Jews swear that we're going to kill him first. It's called self-defense. It's called self-defense. It's my opinion, by the way, that a Malik is Hamas in our, in our generation. I have a little proof from the Siddur. If you look at Adam B'Koyach, it's not a real proof, but have, anyway, if you take the missing letters in Adam B'Koyach Rashitavis, you'll see Hey Mem Samech Hamas. I think it's uh, 42 is uh, journeys, uh, whatever, it's a whole thing. It doesn't really matter. I, I'm not a rabbi, so anyway. But that's my, that's my take. Part of this piece is to kill. Same thing with what about, what about murdering a Michal Shabbos. The basin is allowed to murder Michal Shabbos, to kill him. Why? Because that brings peace to the world. Now there's no one publicly desecrating Shabbos. He's been warned twice. He's making a point. He's an action to Hashem. He's, he's just proving a point. Basin kills him. That brings peace, even though it's murder. So you're allowed to kill for the sake of peace, for God's peace, for God's will to be carried out in this world. Because it's God's world. It's not man's world. He makes the laws. We're just supposed to follow them. 
Hope this helps, Rav Levi, Rav Avner, and uh, may God bless you in everything you do.